The reason why um, you put an academic here on the panel, I guess, is that uh, you want to have someone who's trying to link what has been said with regard to the details to the bigger picture. And um, I'm going to try to do that in my presentation, which sort of um, takes off from the general policy recommendation that underpins all these reform proposals, um, that you want to have uh, mandatory private sector involvement in a bank's failure in order um, to make banks safe to fail. And uh, some thoughts on the institutional preconditions for achieving this policy goal um, will be shared here with regard to the newest round of proposals for improving our regulatory framework in this regard. Um, my general take, and that's well known in the, um, because I'm on record here, is that uh, the statutory balance tool under the BRD is highly complicated and thus uh, is really imperiling uh, the, 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 uh, that we achieve, indeed, uh, the policy goals that are behind this. And uh, the TLAC Emerald doesn't really mu help much in this regard, and I'm going to show you why that is even the case after the reform package. So in general, just to make this point very clear, at the outset, um, if you look at the bank balance sheet, then typically the, the liability side of the balance sheet, its size, composition, et cetera, is determined by market pricing. On the other hand, of course, the risk-taking, that is what we uh, sort of want to influence here, um, is determined by the available funding. So this is the source of either market failure or market discipline. And, um, of course, if the um, assessment is that we see market failure, and that has been the one uh, since the Lincoln report in the European dimension, um, then regulatory intervention is in order. But one key message here is that if you want to achieve the policy goals, then you want to provide for risk-sensitive funding for banks. But that requires, in turn, that at least sophisticated investors must be able to price the kind of debt instruments that are relevant uh, to trigger market discipline adequately. So they not, need to know what's actually going on. And um, the experience shows that under the BRD framework, precisely this is not necessarily the case because there's a lot of discretion involving multiple agencies who have to cooperate and who have to come out with a decision that is very, very hard to predict for investors at the stage of actually investing in the TLAC and Emerald instruments. So one is clearly the resolution trigger, as we know, highly complicated to determine whether a bank is failing or likely to fail, at least if it's a political decision. Uh, second, the selection of re uh, resolution tools. So it's not that we have an automatic uh, bail-in, that we have automatic haircuts. We select from various resolution tools and then only apply um, the relevant uh, legal consequences to this. Um, and certainly we have some li limitations on uh, how, how far we can go with bail-in and that, again, involves discretionary decisions by uh, decision makers in this regard. And finally, of course, the application and cross-border context of the whole uh, regime is highly complicated. Now, Emeril and TLAC can improve the situation in a certain regard, but only insofar as sufficient minimum of high quality, uh, easy to bail in capital allows us to uh, get around certain uh, situations with regard to the discretionary choices that resolution authorities have to make. But still, and that's my main point today with regard to the banking package, uh, even now we see some problems with regard to the remaining discretionary choices that resolution authorities and other uh, agencies involved will have to make. One is clearly the subordination requirement. Already mentioned by some of my uh, previous panelists, um, the TLEC standard requires subordination to ineligible instruments um, and is, in, in this regard, relatively clear. But what the Commission uh, makes out of this is essentially now this proposal that we have in uh, the BRD reform proposal that has been mentioned prior. So we have a clear ranking of insolvency uh, in insolvency that allows at least for newly issued instruments to be uh, subordinated by statute. But the problem starts here because Emerald for, G, uh, for, for substantially important institutions um, is not necessarily always, uh, has not necessarily always to be fulfilled with uh, subordinated instruments. There are significant um, exceptions for that. And they always hinge on a very unclear uh, determination that has to be made by the resolution authorities because it's only possible to fulfill the Emerald requirement with non-subordinated debt if that does not have a material adverse uh, 
the fact on the resolvability of the institution to be determined by the resolution authority. Now think from the perspective of an investor in these instruments, how do you want to determine what the resolution authorities actually will find out later down the road? And I'm going to come back in a minute why this is important. Um, second, with regard to institution-specific EMERAL, so the second pillar, we don't have a subordination requirement, but uh, reversing the rule and exception uh, uh, here, uh, resolution authorities can actually request subordination if that is necessary to ensure that the resolution entity can be resolved in a manner suitable to achieve the resolution objectives. Once again, very unclear what that means. Now, of course, the regime aims at a very high degree of transparency ex ante. So at one point, you relatively can be relatively certain what is uh, supporting it and what is not. But as uh, Thomas has rightly mentioned, this is going to be reassessed on a permanent basis. And that means that if you have statutory, if you have T-like instruments out there that run for uh, a couple of years, you cannot be certain that the position that you originally assumed within the uh, capital that qualifies for TLAC, Emeril, is really the one that you will end up in resolution when it comes later down five years or six years down the road. Um, similarly, uh, with regard to uh, cross-border context, we have the general trade-off that we all know. Well, um, of course, loss sharing and liquidity support is available in a, in a banking group. But on the other hand, of course, you also know that in crisis, it, uh, there's the real threat that the whole situation breaks down along national borders because resolution authorities have diverging preferences depending on how uh, their relative economy is actually concerned or affected by the failure of the bank. Now, of course, uh, we all also know that a credible uh, um, single point of entry approach largely takes away the problem because then uh, the operating subsidiaries are unaffected um, and in this, re in this regard by historical accident the U.S. has an advantage because it has the very uh, holding structure that you need for this kind of uh, mechanism to work. We don't have that in Europe so uh, we work with external TLAC on the one hand which is um, in fact uh, a number that typically has to be fulfilled by the resolution entity, which is the entity, the bank, where resolution tools are actually applied, that is, where the bail-in occurs. And the TLEC standard of the FSB does not require any uh, other uh, uh, entity to have TLEC other than resolution entities. Whereas uh, in the European context, we have, first of all, the concept of uh, internal AMREL, and um, also, the BRD knows uh, the external uh, emerald requirement with regards to subsidiaries. So only, again, in reverse of the rule and exception uh, uh, here, emerald as uh, an external requirement can only be waived by the resolution authority if it thinks this is adequate. And then um, the uh, internal TLAC requirement applies. Now, again, what's the problem with this? Of course, resolution entities and resolution groups have to be identified ex ante. All this is transparent. But what, again, later down the road? Particularly uh, when we see that a bank is actually verging into crisis, then, of course, all these preferences of uh, the national resolution authorities break up once again, and it is very unclear, and again, from an, institution, from an investor's perspective, highly questionable whether the results that I originally predicted at the time of investment is going to be that that is actually occurring when the crisis hits. Now, to conclude, um, the statement that one of uh, our great colleagues from the city has made, Balin and the BRD, is complicated is still true. It will remain so. And this carries important policy implications because achieving the policy objectives, at least as far as we are thinking about market discipline, reinstilling market discipline through risk-sensitive funding, is highly, highly questionable whether that can be achieved under this complicated framework. Um, Emerald TLEC clearly provides some relief, but the main takeaway from this very short presentation should be that um, re resolution authorities have to be aware of the fact that um, they have to be as time consistent and as transparent as possible in order to achieve truly these policy objectives that really underpin these regulatory reform, reform proposals. Many thanks.